Are you with me? If anything, they're trying to figure out how to take that money and take money away from you. Well, I want you to start thinking about something. Every time you sell a co broke listing, you are putting money in your competition's pocket to come back and attack you. Are you with me on that, yes or no? Yes. Now, what I, I mean, that's like giving the guns to your enemy and then going to war. And I know our governments do it all the time, okay? But I'll tell you what, you're a lot sharper than the governments. Am I right or wrong? And every time you sell a co ropes listing, and I know what some of you are going to say, oh, the Real Estate Association says, and, and this and that, I'm going to tell you what. When it's said and done, you will direct people in the way that they, what areas, what type of houses, what's easier to get into, what's not. So I'm not suggesting that you won't ever sell a co ropes but what I am suggesting to you is this, is one hand washes the other. And Miss um, uh, Edie, did I say that right? I'm Mark, by the way. I'm the speaker. Thank you so much for coming out. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for staying awake. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Amy, let me ask you this. If I sold a couple of your listings last month, we got along well, I returned my calls quickly, did all everything that a professional is supposed to do, would you appreciate that? If you had a buyer tomorrow and you knew I had some listings in the area that that buyer was interested in, would you try to reciprocate what I did for you the month before, yes or no? In other words, one hand washes the, right. Now, now I get asked this question all the time, Mark, where's my number one source of income in the real estate business? And I want you to turn to the person and take a look at them beside you. Because your number one source of income in the real estate business is from the agents you work with in your office. Okay, we need to stop looking at other agents in the industry as being our competition and start looking at them as being our customers. You see, Gay, the world is full of a life of abundance. There is enough to go around for everybody. That's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And we got to stop looking at other realtors as being our competition and start looking them at being our customers. Because I'm going to tell you something, I ain't being mean here, I'm being honest. 70% of them are going to be out running people around in the back seat of their cars. Well, if you are going to build a business based on building inventory, which is where the real money is in this business, it's not from selling houses. The average realtor that does five deals a year, they sell houses. The people that make a hundred, two, three, five. I got agents that follow what I teach this year that are going to do 900 a million dollars of business with two people on a team. Why? Because I was able to get through to them that if you want peace and balance in your life, you want to have consistent income no matter what's happening. When the market gets soft, you need twice as many listings. Why? Because the buyers will come to them. That's the way it is, gang. It's an inventory business. An inventory business. Now we take the formula for success, we add the third component, which is what I like to call social capital. And what is social capital? Well, the truth of the matter is, social capital is the new currency of the real estate industry. Social capital is the new currency of the real estate industry. So what does social capital stand for? Well, social stands for society, and the relationships that we have in society. And capital is the true value, monetary, of what those relationships are. You see, gang, here's what I can tell you, is that real estate is truly a local business. You're gonna end up doing business with the butcher, the baker, the candlestick baker, the president of the PTA, the football coach, the basketball coach, the person that helps your kids with the music and all of those things. And here's what I find so interesting. According to the National Association of Realtors, 52% of the public survey consider the realtor that they worked with last time as being a personal friend. That's pretty good, wouldn't you agree? Check this out. The survey went on to say that the people only use the same realtor twice 17 times. 17%. Sorry, not 17 times. Now what does that tell us? It tells us we're pretty good looking after them, 
but we're really bad at staying in touch with them. Is that fair to say? Now, I want you to write this down, and as you write it down, it's going to leave that paper, come up that arm, and get tattooed right here. That it costs more money to find new relationships than it does to maintain the ones that you have. You know, I drive all over, all over, you see realtors put billboards all over. Thousands and thousands of dollars spent on marketing every day to find that next buyer. Is that fair to say, yes or no? And yet it's right there. Here, let's do a quick, I gotta watch my time, but I gotta feel like I can be with you guys till eight o'clock tonight. But here, let me, how many would agree with me that we are creatures of habit? Human beings, give me a show of hands, creatures of habit, okay. So, are you, uh, are, do you have broad shoulders? Can you work with me a little bit? Okay, and it's, oh, uh, Rick, you okay with this, Rick? Because if you're not, I'll find someone else. And I, and I won't embarrass you, I promise you. Yeah, but it is, a, it is important to the group. You good with it? Okay, Rick, you agree, agree we're creatures of habit? Do you agree that generally speaking, we go to the same grocery store, we go to the same dry cleaners, we go to the same health club, probably park our boat in, our boat in the same slip once we get it? Okay, probably cut the grass on the same day, generally speaking. Enjoy the same type of beverage. Creatures of habit. Okay, um, do you have a dry cleaner that you use? Yes. Do you have a grocery store that you use? Generally speaking, do you recognize those people that are in there? Okay, uh, do you recognize the butcher? Okay, more often than not, butcher is male. I don't want to be sexist, but more often than not, okay? Um, so, so here's the question, what's the butcher's name? Who is he or she married to? How many kids do they have? But yet we see them sometimes two or three times a week. How about that cashier? How about the girl or the woman or the man at the dry cleaners that you see once a week? What's their name? Are they married? Do they have great? you see where I'm going with this, yes or no? You see, it's not just great prospecting skills I'm going to teach you, but I want to reset your thinking that everywhere you go in real estate, it's local. Everywhere you interact, there's a possible deal. And according to the National Association of Realtors, every relationship you have, based on your number that you gave to me, the average family will move seven times in their lifetime. You take seven times $6,000, that means that butcher could be worth $42,000 to Rick in his career. The lady at the dry cleaners. So yes, I'm going to teach you the prospecting skills. I'm going to teach you how to work principles. I'm going to teach you how to work expires. I'm going to teach you how to get that seven, all that stuff. But I need to reset the industry to a certain degree to understand that every moment of every day of every person that you bump into your community, you have an opportunity to either build a lasting memory or build a memory that someone says, what a jerk. You follow me? You're waiting for that black dress because you and your spouse are going out that night. Big night out. Dress is supposed to be ready for noon because you've got all this other stuff to do. You go in and it just so happens the machine blew up in the morning and they won't have the dress ready until 1230. There's two things you can do. You can either do what most people in society would do is freak out. Why didn't you call me? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I have a bit Am I right or wrong? Or you can do this. Say, you know what? Life happens, man. Looks like you could use a coffee. Why don't I run down the street to Starbucks, grab us a couple of cups of coffee. For all the years my husband's kept me waiting, he can wait 30 minutes if him and his boss don't like it now. You with me? Right? I can't help it all. But now, all of a sudden, what's that person? Wow, you do that? Probably have the dress ready 15 minutes earlier. Am I right or wrong? See, we need to understand, gang, that our customers come from everywhere, including the people that are in our office. So we need to start looking at real estate as being a local business. The true value of our relationships is every relationship that you have in your immediate sphere is worth seven transactions to you. And be more focused on building a group of 500 than you are in marketing to the whole city. You see, the marketing gurus tell us this. That if you have 500 people, I'm not telling you you've got to break bread every day with these people, but if you have 500 people, when they think real estate, they think of you, the marketing gurus tell us this. Out of the 500, 20% will send you a hot lead each year. That's 100 hot leads. Out of those 100 hot leads, you'll have a 1 in 2 conversion versus a 1 in 3 with a cold lead. That means that 100 will bring you in 50 listings. If half of them sell, it's 25. If half buy from you again, it's 12.5. 37.5 transactions, let's use 40.